All right, this is the next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussions. Continue our Monday Night Wars review series. It's going to be round 17, December 25th, 1995. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody out there. This was obviously a taped Monday Nitro because they have second week there in Augusta, Georgia. There is no Monday Night Raw slated for this one. They'll be back for the Raw Bowl the following week, New Year's Day. So it's actually a pretty good thing because more than likely, if you look at this card, Monday Nitro probably would have won this one too. Two days out from Starcade, and you've got a, the main event is uh, Macho Man defending the title against Ric Flair. It was forty-eight cool. hours before Starcade. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was cool that um they had an episode on Christmas, man. That was good. Yeah. We were all, you know, we were all home, like, and you still had wrestling. I think, I think Raw showed a best of or something that night. If anybody yeah, they, tuned I don't in, know. I don't they were remember. preempted. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what they gave, but um. Yeah, they, they didn't have yeah. an episode, so yeah. whatever they threw in there didn't matter. Macho Man defending it for the second week in a row, defending the title. And and, and against an opponent that's not too shabby in being Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Let's start it off. First, last week, he beat Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Now Lex Luger faces the other half of the American Males in Scotty Riggs. And the fans were given Luger American an, Males. An, an ovation. Mainly, yeah. I'm, the, he, they're in the Atlanta area, so... He's going to get the popularity. Plus, he's still coming off like a baby face, despite the fact that he's with Jimmy Hart. So people still don't know where to go with this. And uh, this match, like the one week before, Scotty Riggs is no match for Lex Luger, who's on one hell of a run. Luger with a power slam, followed by the torture rack on Scotty Riggs, and Lex Luger is the victor. Yeah. Oh. And then, of course, at, following that, uh, Mean Gene Oakland had interviewed Sting oh. prior to his match. Oh, here, yeah, here we go. Um, he was asking him uh, once again about himself and Luger, and even Sting yelled what I saw. Oh, come on. After four, five, six weeks of this stuff, enough is enough. You're going to see the two of them beat the holy hell out of each other in 48 hours at Starcade. Just, like, enough. They've got a business relationship. I don't. they got no. a personal friendship. That's leave it at that. I mean, come on. It, it's just getting redundant at this point. You yeah, know, no, it is, but um, it should be of note. Hogan is suspended for his actions. They for find the rest of 1995. Yeah, which it's almost over anyway. But <laughs> yeah, he got he got. They finally, they finally Christmas with his family. They finally suspended him. They yeah, finally my heart had, bleeds for him. They finally had enough of Hogan shenanigans. Yeah, my um, heart bleeds for him. He's on vacation. It was interesting that they had Flair getting an opportunity to get the title before. Exactly. Yeah. For that match and start. What was the Macho Man would have been inserted at that match? Is that what it, I forget? Yeah, he if would he have been lost, the triangle match. Then he would have been okay. Yeah. And then Flair would face the winner right, of right. the triangle match. So yeah. So Flair was in a win-win scenario. Exactly. If I don't yeah. win here, I still got a. I'm I'm still in the triangle match where I can get another opportunity right, at still got another crime, Yeah. So, and like you said, uh, it was announced on uh, during the next match, which was Sting versus Big Bubba. That Bischoff had announced that during uh, Hulk Hogan was suspended till the end of '95. Yes. Again, my it's heart beats for you. You're home for Christmas and New Year's. No. Oh, you poor guy. So suspend him for half of '96. I mean, he's only going around hitting everybody with a damn chair. I mean, he's he's more psycho right now than Randy Savage. Yeah, and he wasn't even scheduled to be at Starcade. No, like, he didn't have a match with the Giant. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, th them doing this is just storyline, K-Fob oh. telling, okay, he went home for the holidays. Yeah, pretty much. Went back to Florida. Exactly. So, during the match, uh, Sting on the top rope, th this was kind of a little weird, the way Bubba had grabbed him. As he brought him down, Sting was able to roll him up, and he uh, pins Big Bubba with kind of, with a small package, off, kind of off the top rope. So, now Sting is running with his momentum into Starcade. So, let's see if he could win the triangle match and face uh, the WCW champion, whoever that'll be. Following that, uh, me and Gene had interviewed Lex Luger and Jimmy Hart. Uh, Gene asked Luger about him and Sting. The weekly, the weekly Jimmy Hart. Uh, it used to be Kevin yeah. Sullivan. Now, yeah, now it's, Lex it's Luger. Lex Luger and Jimmy Hart, yeah. And the soap opera of Sergeant Craig Pittman, week two. Because now he comes out asking Jimmy Hart, can you manage me? Can you make me like him? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. He's like... I'm the number one manager. Hell, I just got an award. He's like, take your shirt off. He's like, okay, when you look like that, I'll manage you. He's pointing to Luger. He's looking at, you know, melted ice cream here. And he's looking at, uh, if I was Pittman, I'd have cold cocked him. But should have, he should have. Not in the storyline. But at this point, I kind of feel bad 
that they're doing this kind of storyline with Pittman. I mean, he's got the badass persona. His wrestling is a little weak. But, I mean, to, to go around groveling for a manager, I mean, what what is this? Come on. I mean, and, you know, Jimmy Hart, go, go find Where's Teddy Long? Go find him. Bobby Heenan's not going to do it. So, I mean, who else was there? So, in any event, our next match on the card was Dean Malenko versus Mr. JL. Uh, another good match on the card. You know, they they referenced, you know, Dean Malenko. Every time they say the man of a thousand holes, I think of that Monday Nitro with Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. Arm bar. Saskatchewan double takedown toe hold. I can't wait till we get to that one. But in any event, Dean Malenko was pretty impressive in this match. We didn't have Eddie Guerrero this week, so we got Dean Malenko, which is just as good. Um, Malenko, um, Bischoff called it a side breaker off the top rope. It was kind of like a gut buster, not a side breaker. Um, then he had uh, a double leg submission, almost like the calf crusher that AJ Styles uses, but he used both legs to put the pressure on the knee, and JL submitted. So back uh, two out of the first three matches that we've had end in submission. So Dean Malenko gets the victory. Now before the, the final match, Mean Gene Oakland interviewed Ric Flair. Uh, now out comes Jimmy Hart. Jimmy apologizes for the dungeons, mainly Kevin Sullivan's actions the following week. Cooler heads prevailing. You know, he's, you know, that's what he's talking about what uh, Pillman said uh, about the dungeon and how they kind of got into a little verbal confrontation last week in the ring. You know, Flair's backed up behind Anderson. You know, yeah, what he said, I'll fight you. So, and then Jimmy Hart was actually, he wants to be ringside for Ric Flair on this mm-hmm. evening, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, why do you want to be in Flair's corner for this? All right, he wants to help him. He's like, oh, you said something to Flair, right? That he owed him. It's like, yeah, it's like, because he helped, he saved him a couple of weeks back, so we owed him a debt. He always pays his debt. So Ric Flair said yes, and I'm like, okay, Jimmy's got an agenda. Jimmy always has an agenda. Yeah, so I mean, it's going to be it. Good. Eventually, you know, this all leads to the alliance to end Hulkamania, right? And then the Dungeon versus the Horseman. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but that's the, that's after, right? That's after. That's after, life. yeah, yeah. That whole uncensored debacle. I mean, the two, the two on. one eight mm-hmm. nightmare. I just, I, I try to forget the it. Mega powers, know. man. Mega powers. Oh my god! And it's right around the corner within the next three months. Yeah. So, oh, geez, I can't. I can't. Anyway, main event of the evening for the WCW title. Weird that they're doing it 48 hours before Starcade, but it's it's Monday Nitro. It's where the big boys play. Randy Savage defending the title against Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about everybody else, but I've said this. I was tired of the whole Savage Flair thing already. They started it as soon as he got to WCW. They kept it going all through 95. It's just like it was ongoing because, you know, we saw the we saw this yeah. in 1992. I agree. But at, at least at least Macho Man has the belt now. Yes. And Flair can't seem to get it off of him. Yeah. Um, of course, Jimmy Hart at ringside, show, you know, making sure everybody knows he's there. He's gotten involved. He's kicking Savage on the outside as well as choking him. Um, Savage was on the the ring apron. Um, during, yeah, while Savage was on the ring apron, he was choking him out. During this match, I did enjoy Mongo mentioning that Medusa should have thrown because they mentioned the whole thing with Medusa that he should she, she should have thrown the title in the kitty litter. No, oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, well, I know Mongo had some hateful this dissension towards WWE after WrestleMania think, Eleven. I don't think he did. They wanted him. I think they wanted him, and he just. I don't know what it is. All He's I just know being is a that, company man. He's just being a company man. That's all. Well, I mean, I got a kick out of the comment. You, know, you should funny. have thrown that in the kitty litter. And, of course, you know, they, because they brought it up because they mentioned again where the big boys play and, of course, where the big girls play. And that's when they mentioned what Medusa did last week. Um, now, after Jimmy Hart tripped Randy Savage, Savage, you know, went to hit him. Uh, Luger came down and attacked Savage. So Ric Flair got disqualified. So Savage gets the win. Um, Sting came down and Flair got a hold of him. Luger's beating, beating up Savage. Now, it almost looked like when Sting was coming in that he was heading for, for Savage and Luger. Right, right, right. And then Flair intercepted him. 
So you still don't know what, what the deal is there. What's going on? And then, of course, Sting and Savage, you know, they they bump into each other, and here we go. First it was, you know, Sting and Hogan. Now it's Savage and Sting because they can't be Hogan because Hogan's not here. Right. And they had, you know, they had to be broken up as they're shoving each other. I'm like, oh, come on. Fatal four-way elimination match. Let's just do it. Sting, Luger, right. Savage, Hogan, let's get it going. Let's go. I mean, they're showing all the signs for it. Yeah, I mean, I know. It, 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 was, it was fine, though. I mean, I, 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 it was fine. Without Hogan, it was fine. Oh, definitely. Like I said, Hogan being suspended. Yeah, a typical, typical Nitro ending because I don't, I don't know if you caught this. Bischoff was saying we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> He's starting it now instead of waiting. Right, for right, 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 right. Then we got to go. Here, here's a here's a spoiler for you. Hulk Hogan will be back the following week on Nitro because he will be facing Ric Flair for the WCW title. Conveniently, no oh, Jesus Christ, got suspended, but he's the number one contender. Wait, Hulk Hogan? Uh, of course, I'll enjoy the moments of 1996 when he's hardly wrestling on the card. You know, before the NWO thing, before his little hiatus, I'm going to enjoy that. Because really, the fans are seriously booing him on a weekly basis. And it's mainly because they find that Sting, Luger, and Savage are more popular than he is with them, especially Sting. And Hogan is, they were right in the documentary with, about the start of the NWO. Hogan is losing yeah. the, the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. He only got cheered last week because he was hitting everybody with a chair. But outside of that, I enjoy, that, I, I'm well, that was good. We, we spoke about that. it. That was, that was fun. I love but, it. but prior to that, he was, he was getting booed out, booed out of the building. Every week. So we'll see what happens next week yeah. when he, uh, see if he gets booed out of the building. Yeah. However, Nitro did draw a 2.5 for this episode. Unopposed. But again, no no Monday Night Raw, so, yeah. so the, the card still stays the same. I'm at 11.4. You're at 12.3 okay. Nitro, and the actual rating has it 8 to 5 to 2. Yeah. So it still oh. stays the same until Nitro wins probably next week. Right. Unless Raw Bowl is really that good, we're going to have to tune. Right. Everybody's got to tune. I don't remember. We'll out. see. We'll see when we watch it again. We we do have one. Uh, I'll mention it real quick. We do have one um, one person that watches that commented that was really looking forward to it. That was one of his favorite Monday Night Raws. So the the Raw Bowl. So we'll see what happens next week when we when we review it. All right. Well, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.